بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو پاکستان ٹیلی ویژن ورلڈ اینڈ وی آر ہیئر ڈسکسنگ دا وزٹ آف پرائم منسٹر عمران خان اینڈ ہز اون ٹو راج ٹو رشیا ہی از بیک ناؤ لاٹ آف امپورٹنٹ میٹنگس ہیپن لاٹ آف امپورٹنٹ کولیبریشنس ور ڈسکسڈ ڈیورنگ دا کورس آف دیٹ ڈے ودر اٹ بی ود ولادیمیر پوٹن دا پریزیڈنٹ آف رشیا ودر اٹ بی ود دی انرجی منسٹر ودر اٹ بی ود دا ڈپٹی پرائم منسٹر ود اٹ بی ود دا بزنس ڈیلیگیشن آف رشیا اینڈ پاکستان اور ودر اٹ بی ان جنرل دا مین کنسینسس واز دیٹ دیر واز a broad convergence of issues between Russia and Pakistan and that was what was discussed uh, during the course of the visit of Imran Khan Saab. Also Shah Mahmood Qureshi Saab gave a press uh, briefing uh, today this afternoon in which he also highlighted the different aspects of the visit of Imran Khan Saab to Russia and what were the important points that were discussed during the course of this visit. We've been joined by two important guests uh, in the studios. Let me introduce them to you one by one. On my very right is Ran Athar Javed Saab. He's the director of Pakistan House and he's also a strategic and a foreign affairs analyst. Thank you very much, Ran Saab, who have joined us. Our second guest is a senior analyst and my uh, colleague, uh, Farooq Pitafi. Farooq, thank you very much to have thank joined you. us uh, for this hour. Let's begin with you, Ran Saab. Ran Saab, uh, Shami Mood Qureshi Saab says that a broad a uh, range of topics were discussed during the different meetings and there's a convergence of impo- on important issues such as Afghanistan, such as Islamophobia and others. How important in your point of view from a regional and then from a global perspective is this visit? I think first of all this visit is very, is, it has been very crucial because it took place of any prime minister of the country from Pakistan 23 years after that. And secondly the convergence actually I think lies basically in, in both countries uh, desire to establish peace in Afghanistan mm. uh, in a cohesive nature in which the regional stability prevails. Mm. And uh, on the Islamic phobia actually, uh, it is very uh, sort of heartening to know and we have seen it that the Prime Minister Imran Khan had been a vocal in almost every other forum to explain to, uh, to the Western leadership and also to general population that why it is important uh, for the countries in order to not to have a replay of the prior to Second World War situation in which the hatred was generated, as you know, against Jews and then the Nazis and all that took place. So mm. in order to avert any social uh, c- uh, contrast and chaos in the Western societies and also in Muslim, it is important to respect others' religions. <coughs> so that's why when President Putin came out very strong in explaining this, uh, I would say really in a in a manner in which he uh, created a wedge and differentiated that the your freedom of expression doesn't allow you to automatically warrant you to uh, insult other religion. So that means that they have really, I would say, there are two important components we should remember. One is the strategic component, other is the popular opinion as well. The consumption is not only because when the Russian uh, leadership, when the President Putin says something, uh, people do listen because uh, in his own country, he did a tremendous job. Like, uh, for example, the biggest mosque, if you see in the uh, main mosque in mm. Moscow, and he also has converted one in or- from Orthodox Church to, uh, to basically a mosque, given that space, place to, uh, and of course, you, we all know it's more than 25 million Muslims in, in, in Russia, and uh, th- it's, it's a very cohesive environment. I mean, I've been there several times, mm. And we have witnessed ourselves that it was like you, you don't feel any, like for example, any uh, discontent or display it to the other mm. religion. So that's, I think from that point of view, both strategically, as the, uh, I said, the convergence of the idea to stabilize Afghanistan and beyond in the region, and a balance of power in, in, in terms of uh, conflict management. All right. So I think I, I, I would say that it's, it's really heartening to see the trip has been great mm. success in that way. And I think it was very important in the current scenario as well that <coughs> both the countries would talk to each other and of course converge on important points of views like you've just discussed. Farooq, uh, uh, the Prime Minister also met with the Deputy Prime Minister of right. Russia and also with the Minister for Energy right. and what was discussed during included bilateral trade, investment opportunities and energy cooperation whether it be the North-South gas pipeline which we've discussed. And Pakistan in stream, yeah. And, and of course uh, the Pakistan stream and also to extend 
the uh, the current stream that that goes up till uh, Uzbekistan uh, through Afghanistan into yeah. Pakistan and so that Pakistan could avail the opportunities for gas right. uh, this and others uh, do you feel Russia is a good partner future partner present partner as far as uh, collaboration in different avenues are concerned uh, right uh, 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 Umar uh, it reminds me actually of the day when Uri had taken place, hmm. right? And India had actually fake, uh, uh, made this fake claim that they have conducted a surgical strike in Pakistan. At that time, there was this, uh, these reports in the Indian media that there could be a wholesale uh, crisis between the two countries. At that time, Russian forces were to uh, come to Pakistan uh, for joint drills, right? And uh, Indian media started running the news that they have cancelled uh, because of India, right? Yet they came. And that was, to me at least as a citizen, very heartening to see mm. that they are here. And that means perhaps it is not going to escalate. I think that today when the Prime Minister has returned, it reminded me that we are also trying to be good friends, right? And the potential of cooperation between the two countries is great already because both countries uh, share a joint region. Uh, Central Asia is cradle of our civil civilization and uh, Central Asia is essentially Russia's sphere of influence. So that is a humongous convergence, hmm. right? Then of course Afghanistan itself, if you remember, I uh, was uh, talking about five commonalities yes. between the two countries, right? Points of the, convergence. Yeah, po points of convergence, commonalities, synergies, mm. point of synergy, whatever you call it. Mm. The first one is counter-terrorism because both these countries have faced terrorism for quite some time. And there were groups which were actually based in Afghanistan from TTP to IMU to now ISKP and umpteen others. So they need to work together. The second one is connectivity, as I pointed out, not only Russia and Pakistan, but also Central Asia. Central Asia in entirety is landlocked like uh, Afghanistan. So it is important to connect the whole region to hot waters. So that becomes a very important thing. The third, the, and it goes through Afghanistan, right? The third one is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the ethic, uh, ethnic, uh, you know, uh, c collectivism of Afghanistan and its integrity because it is a polyglot. It has Pashtuns, we have Pashtuns, it has Tajiks, they converge with Tajikistan and then it has Uzbeks and Hazaras and others. So it is very important to remember that Afghanistan stays together and there is ethnic harmony in the country. Uh, the th fourth one is uh, economic stabilization because that is very important if you remember their currency is falling and any country in the region can become a sink that can actually take everyone together uh, along, right? So it is important to ensure that and finally humanitarian crisis because most of these countries that we are talking about including Pakistan are neighbors of Afghanistan and God forbid if there is a refugee crisis it will put a lot of pressure on all these countries. So these are five convergence points between Russia and Pakistan mm. that have essentially brought us together. Mm. And then the sky is the limit. And I think Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, by going there with the Hyde delegation, has proven mm. that we are ready for this natural convergence and relationship. All right. Speaking of further conversions, Rana Saab, uh, during the press briefing, Shah Mahmood Qureshi Saab also pointed out that during the meeting uh, of our Prime Minister with the Deputy uh, Prime Minister of Russia and the Energy Minister, uh, there was also discussed the establishment of the energy terminal at Gwadar. Uh, Gwadar is also a very important port as far as Pakistan is concerned, as far as China is concerned. Uh, now, uh, how do you feel Russia can also benefit from uh, this energy terminal or Gwadar in general? I think it's te technically, if I have to say it, it's a, it's a huge uh, step in the right direction because Chinese and Russians already had a really very appropriate and calibrated synergy. Uh, in different projects. They are cooperating in economics, mm. defense, mm. security. I mean, Russians coming on board mm. to, uh, to uh, establish a, a terminal, energy terminal, will automatically re realize and materialize what we are looking forward to benefit from Gwadar. And mm. we like to make Gwadar as it is an international port 
which is not in contestation or competition to any other ports, mm. but in itself it is located in such an important way which really cuts through a lot of heavy expenditures, if you, I may say so, on the transportation, uh, or the sea transportation, which largely 80% or so takes place through, uh, the, he was referring to the warm waters, and of course uh, th this area. And it will also uh, cut to in the distance and time, time scale. So for Russians, if this happens, this would be an integrated economic energy project which will help Pakistan to further expand and re realize Central Asian pipelines. There are other several projects which are in pipeline and they can be materialized, Russians coming on board. As we all know, Russians are really expert and uh, very, very good in terms of gas pipelines, but also in terms of anything relates to the connectivity. And that means that the distance, if you look from Siberia to Moscow, mm. and if you look at the size of the country, that matters a lot. I think from that perspective, this energy terminal would be an innovative idea to bring two powers together, which mm. already had an understanding. Look, in all partnership, the country's synergy at the diplomatic, economics, and uh, leadership level are very, very important. No big project can go further if this doesn't happen. I agree with and, you. And my one, one just small mm -hmm. point to mention to Afghanistan, which uh, my friend Batafi was mentioning, is regarding, he mentioned five points. I think mm. what makes it uh, better for Pakistan and Russia to join hand along with China, because, you know, a, a country which is uh, after 20 years of destruction needs infrastructure building. It also needs, he mentioned importantly, all inclusive, the composition, the ethnic calibration, their composition to be participated in the government, administration, governance, but also in the projects which are required, for example, education and healthcare, in all that because of the size of the country and the different, uh, different ethnicity. So I think Russia also supports this idea. If you remember, I mentioned in my last uh, mm -hmm. conversation that yeah. We had a long, I had a long interaction with President Putin and in which he mentioned this point about mm. that we are interested to promote uh, the, the composition, the balance of mm. uh, ethnicity. I mean, unlike other parties who were uh, uh, dodging the idea that they were subduing the Pashtuns. So he agrees on this, that mm. the Pashtuns and are that's a very majority. important point, you know. And that's an important point. Of course, that is, I agree with you. Farooq, uh, when our Prime Minister met with the, the a business consortium of the businessmen from Pakistan and Russia who were based in Moscow, he talked about procedural bottlenecks on yeah. how to remove them so that uh, the trade cooperation uh, could further improve uh, between the two countries. He also talked about how to remove uh, uh, obstacles that are present in, of course, uh, this relationship, uh, trade relationship between the two countries. And he also talked about... Trade and investment. Yes, and he also talked about an investment conference that is going to happen March and in Pakistan, in which he said that there was a lot of interest that emanated from the Russian businessmen right. to come and participate in economy, trade, Russia and Pakistan. Can we further delve on it, improve on it? Of course. Uh, see, this is, uh, and I, I thought that you are still about to conclude, so I, I, I took a pause. <laughs> but earlier, because Gawadar was actu actually also mentioned, mm. I have very quickly to add All something. Right. Uh, Sahab, uh, Dara Sahib is a polite man. Mm. He said that uh, uh, Gawadar is not contesting with any other. Mm. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and shamelessly plug our own port and tell everybody that they is uh, compared to every other port in the region, it mm. is the best one. Mm. One, it has, if you have seen the geography, it is most accessible one. Secondly, it is perhaps the only deep sea port in this region, mm. right? Uh, that actually ensures that access is totally there. And finally, it is important to remember that when you look at the number of births that, are, that have been created, it is going to compete with and beat all others. Right? So it is important that Pakistan, not only Gawadar, by the way, Pakistan has a very long coastal uh, you know, st uh, strip. So Pakistan can open other ports as well and they are going to be as accessible. 
Now, uh, regarding bottlenecks, it is very important to remember that Pakistan kind of uh, in, uh, inherited the colonial infrastructure of uh, regulation and bureaucracy. That's why we had this uh, uh, problem with investors that whenever they came, they had to go to many windows uh, to seek approval for a single uh, project. And that is why the one window operation has yeah, been initiated. Exactly. And that is, that is the whole point. Mm. We want to cut through the red tape and we want to actually project uh, the way it is possible. For example, SEZs, uh, special economic zones are coming up. And uh, Russians were the first ones who showed interest, and Russia Kai as well, which has been inaugurated. Mm, mm. And the umpteen other. So they have a lot of money, they have a lot of uh, investment potential, and the only thing that was needed was to showcase the opportunities from Pakistan's side. And thanks to Board of Investment and the hard work they're doing now, I think we have developed a, a bouquet of options where they can actually do it. And when this conference takes place, we are going to further do it. Uh, but of course, there are multi countries involved hmm. when you talk about trade, uh, because Russia and Pakistan are not immediate neighbors. So you have to actually work, both countries have to work with other countries also hmm. to ensure that red tape is not there to stop trade. That, that is important because, you know, trade relationship is extremely important to Pakistan as well. This is what the Prime Minister has been emphasizing time and again, that we need to be export oriented and we need to increase our exports. And I think with countries like Russia, there is a lot of scope in improving this relationship. Yeah, uh, Russia is a fascinating country. Mm. It is the largest landmass, uh, mm. political landmass uh, on this planet. And yet its population is less than Pakistan. Mm. It is almost uh, 144 million and it is, uh, you know, 14 crore, 14.4 crore of Pakistan mm. uh, compared to Pakistan. And then, of course, they also have influence over Kazakhstan, which is fourth or fifth largest landmass. So you have access to that kind of opportunities and then you can have market developed there also but we have to work on our uh, actually export base which mm. is very small mm. we have to diversify the portfolio to ensure that other countries can benefit from what we produce and i think that diversification of portfolio is what the current government is also working upon yeah. rana saab uh, one of the things that was also highlighted during the press briefing by shami mutkureshi saab when he talked about the meeting between Vladimir Putin and our Prime Minister Imran Khan, he said regional imbalance in South Asia was discussed. And he said that it was also discussed that there were certain developments that were uh, happening that could endanger South Asia. I would like your comment on that and I'll ask uh, Pitafi about it. Well, to be honest, uh, in, in this part of the world, what we have seen witnesses. Um, I, s I always say it, and I said it in Moscow, I said it everywhere, that uh, India is playing double hand. And the double hand means that it, uh, trying to maintain strategic relation with the U.S. partner and also partnering with Russia. Mm. And that also creates a problem for the countries like Pakistan because Pakistan has always never asked any country to have a mutually exclusive relationship. So endangering in uh, South Asia means that there must not be, I mean, entire Asia actually, I think it's referral to maybe about the South China Sea and the, all the, also the, the way uh, hardware was moved uh, in the past two years before the COVID. There, w there had been a problems uh, which may erupt in, uh, in the near future. And I'm, I'm not being, for being polite here uh, because <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm being more Diplomatic. Moderate. Yes, <laughs> no, because because uh, diplomatic and also some things are being under under pro procedure progress. All right. So we have to just wait and cautious, see. But cautious uh -huh. and optimistic. yeah, but I think the India's role further India's any offensive against Pakistan mm. can endanger South Asian peace. Mm. India's negative role in Afghanistan uh, jeopardizing uh, these uh, Russia, Pakistan, China's initiative to. Uh, create a cohesive peace in there and maintain uh, law and order in the region. If we don't do it, the uh, Batafi mentioned about the counterterrorism. Russia has uh, expressed explicitly about the Daesh's uh, transnational activities if they are not being uh, neutralized in Afghanistan. And mm -hmm. we, as we all know, that uh, India's previous roles have indicated and clearly suggested mm. that its national security advisor had been involved in 
uh, transporting and smuggling, uh, I mean, uh, a few thousand fighters from Syria and Iraq, and that's not exactly, the, that's exactly the case. Mm. So these things are, the two points which he might have been referring to. One is this one, the other is South China Sea, and India's uh, potential threats to the region and trying to be more like both in both two boats, like mm. it wants to benefit taking S-400 from Russia, mm. but it also want to benefit Rafael and also from uh, US sharing of intelligence on mm. the aerial intelligence and other real-time intelligence. We should not uh, forget they have a civil nuclear deal as well. Civil nuclear deal as well, mm. but the civil nuclear deal, by the way, with the US didn't materialize because mm. US asked them to inspect all sites and they refused to comply with the Congress and all those inherent uh, regulations which they have uh, natural regulations that if they give the deal they want to inspect everything so they refuse that's why the deal between this pre president bush former president bush all 2007 right. it didn't work out farah what's your take on that Bef and then we'll go to some regional perspectives and uh, uh, developments as well right uh, india i don't know what to make of india now any longer india is a bully india is a brat it is a damsel in distress and <laughs> it is a drama queen they keep on play acting on television every second minute. They throw hissy fits every five minutes. <laughs> and yesterday also, just because Pakistan's prime minister was there, mm. Indian prime minister had to actually ensure that his people see that he is calling Putin, right? Mm. And <laughs> then they try to actually tell us that he is the wise guy on, in the room. And mm. he actually instructed uh, Putin that he should not be actually resorting to violence. Hmm. Kindly take this advice to your own heart and try dealing your own neighbors with compassion and kindness and equal, you know, magnanimity. And stop you aggression in the yeah. in Indian occupied and Kashmir. Yeah. And not only Indian or illegally occupied also Kashmir, the minorities, Muslims. within their own country. Hmm. And now everyone is a minority in India, right? Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, the way they have actually... Even the secular know, Hindus are minorities. Yeah, secular Hindus are, Dalits are. Hmm. Now, if Christians. you know about... Sir, hang on. In UP, now even Brahmins, uh, there are 200 fake encounters of Brahmins. So they don't know how to handle their own country now any mm. longer. Mm. And then they keep on, they have, um, you know, manufactured this uh, huge industry of propaganda that is called mm. Indian media. Mm. Fake and news, then yeah. they keep on manipulating facts to such an extent that I, I was pointing out earlier that they are having this exercise with other countries called Milan. And it was converted to quad uh, exercise. And they try to present it as or pass it on mm -hmm. as quad exercise, mm -hmm. whereas Russia is in it, mm -hmm. right? And we don't know what becomes of and it and because and of Russia. And quad, sorry to interject, yeah. uh, Watafi sahab. Quad actually is the most disliked in, in, the, in this part of the region. Yeah, Russians are really, really, they're, they're they're really they're 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 despise they're it. Mm. Right? They're but regardless, Quad is it's basically... A mini NATO. Mm. Quad is essentially mm. a babysitting, uh, you know, a, a club. And there's only one baby there. Mm. The rest are countries which have alliances, direct alliances, bilateral alliances with the US. Mm. The only be baby in the whole, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, this uh, organization mm. or whatever you may call it or club is India mm. because India keeps on expecting that everybody is going to come, bow down and kiss its ring. Mm. And that's why they keep on manipulating everything, right? Quad is a non-starter. It is not going anywhere. When the U.S. has to do something, they come up with AUKUS or ja uh, Japanese and the U.S. Uh, alli uh, alliance and similar kind of thing. That is not happening. India is the first country that, before your eyes, is totally destroying its own soft power and hard power because it keeps on lying hmm. and asking other countries to censor themselves. Hmm. Recently, they asked Singaporean Prime Minister to censor himself, hmm. right? In such a state, nobody can help India. Hmm. So in this situation, I think that India will keep on creating problems till hmm. the time Narendra Modi is there. And then there will be change of a government. By, but by that time, usually all these bombs or landmines that you saw hmm. actually explode after 10 years. Hmm. Right? Or implode, yeah. Yeah, or implode or whatever. In this case, it's imploding. Uh, hmm. Both, I think. Yeah. yeah, explode and impo implode. Economic bomb is taking there. Uh, then there's this ethnic and minority or racial relationship and then, then religious relationship all as right. well. 
they will all explode hmm. and then the next government will be in dire, dire hmm. straits. I mean, we are already seeing the, the hallmarks of all of that, a little trailer of what is going to happen in India by whatever is currently occupying India regionally or nationally and everything is evident to everybody. A ghost called exactly. Narendra Modi. <laughs> Rana Saab, let's come to China. Now, uh, Pakistan and China have convergence of very important issues and of course they are known as Iron Brothers. With Pakistan and Russia, we are developing a strong relationship. Now, uh, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping also very recently today have had a telephonic conversation. Pakistan, China, Russia. We add other countries, Iran, Turkey, and so on and so forth. Uh, is a new world order in the making? Yeah, actually, uh, this is a very interesting question. Uh, I would explicitly say that, that actually this is, this order will undermine and discard the new world order which had was established in the post, I would say, 9-11. The old uh, the, 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 This would be discarded. Mm. This is already discarded mm, mm. because the challenges which are being posed by the respective European state to their citizens, they are beyond our imagination. Mm. During the COVID-19, we have witnessed a contradictory and all other policies from United States to England England had been in tatters as well in socially and politically and others, they have other problems. But I would say to you that this creation establishment of a strong bloc in which two are UN Security Council members mm. is absolutely positive in terms of the weight they have behind. Mm. One is a strategically very, very important, Russia, mm. and economically China is a is a, you know, it's, it's, it's really a power, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, economic superpower these days. And these two countries, along with Pakistan, because of the location, as we always say it, but Pakistan's location has, is becoming much more uh, fruitful and rewarding for the regional and connectivity. That is why you see that the Chinese has preferred, despite all the Indian hue and cry, all other powers, Western powers, we sustain this relationship in a way, in a manner in which uh, Farooq was mentioning and you were mentioning Iron Brothers, but mm. also look at the, the both trips came back to back. Mm. And President Putin was there to mm. attend the Olympics. Prime Minister Imran Khan was there. It's not important to have an exclusive one-on-one -on -one meeting sometime. Mm. Mm. It's the presence in the three leaders in one room and the gestures, the importance to validate. You show the whole world. Show the, the whole alliances. world. That the, yeah. And that's why I think this trip and what you asked the question that he's fearing, I think it, it all comes down that the block is, or whatever we call it, economic strategic block is mm. already established. I wouldn't use the word block because it's something we wouldn't you want, want to. You want to block uh, the word <laughs> block. Huh? Okay. Well, a regional realignment. Okay, let's, let's, let's say regional cooperation yes. alignment or whatever. All right, convergence of uh, different countries but this because is the, of the interest. Yeah, this is, but the, the convergence and these are the words, the expression which are not with the framework. All right. So either you call it cooperation. Cooperation, or, all yeah, right. Let's call the, it a cooperative. Because you have to. You have to give something to, as you said, the order. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. give the, the economic order. All right. Yeah. In this economic order and this realignment of uh, interests yeah, realignment. Uh, between countries, where do you see uh, this region going? For right. Um, uh, the same question first? Yes. The order? Or as you want. Right. Um, and I'm going to annoy uh, Rana Sab here for a bit. I think I you, this is what you have, you have been your intention all along. <laughs> you have never done it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm going to try friendly. to do it. Uh, you know, I'm also a student of IR, international mm. relations, right? Mm. And a student of history. But I think for uh, punditry, IR has the worst record possible, right? Mm. Mm. They don't have any confirmed theories in the world. Mm. The only one that has so far been proven is balance of power mm. dating back to, back to 200 years, right? Or more. And then they couldn't predict the um, uh, uh, creation of mm. a Soviet Union, the fall of Soviet Union. Mm. They could not uh, prove uh, the start of, uh, you know, Cold War and the way of the thing was. And every record has been failing, right? The biggest problem is that we keep on trying to impose these paradigms on everything. Uh, uh, earlier, as I pointed out, there used to be the age of mercantilism, 
and colonialism. Then we had the age of bipolarity, then unipolarity or whatever name you want to give it. And now there should be something new, right? Or are we going to go in reverse? The biggest problem is we are living in a new century, a new millennium. Mm. And we keep on going back to the old ideas, the Cold War ideas, that there has to be bipolarity or tripolarity or quadrilateral. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, no, not even multipolarity. I, if I want to borrow a term from mm -hmm. their, their jargon, then I will say that it is complex interdependence. All right. So all countries are going to work together. Mm. You know, remember the entire human civilization. I wish there were you had more time. I would have been yeah, human civilization. I would have dissected interdependence complex. Yeah, yeah. Then I can dissect anything. All right. Let, let, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's see. Let's see if yeah. I have. <laughs> we have friends already. We are very yeah. close friends. Yeah. No, but uh, humbly so. You know, uh, the uh, fact is that only months ago, hmm. the entirety of human civilization was defeated by one microbe. Entire world was shut down, right? The virus didn't ask you for your passport. Hmm. It didn't uh, see your color, uh, your color, your race, your blood type. It didn't see your, uh, you know, religion. It attacked you. Hmm. So all the challenges are common and we'll have to work together. I don't want to think that the US or China are going to fight. Chinese will tell you they don't mm. they are not looking for that. No. Mm. You ask Russians, they don't want that mm. as well. So I think we'll have to develop some new jargon. Mm. Until that time, let us actually suspend IR mm. and return to study of history. All right. From the study of history to diplomacy, my last question to the both of you. Uh, Shah Mahmood Qureshi Saab, uh, uh, alluded to one term and I'd like to ask your opinion on that. He said, Pakistan's context is to maximize its diplomatic space. Have we succeeded in it? Your take? I mean, of course, uh, going to Russia, engaging Iran and Saudi Arabia at one point, and this is also, the, as he was saying, referring to the history. Mm. Uh, we have defeated that conventional, mutually inclusive relationship. Mm. So we have done this, and also with the European Union, the United States, Britain, independent relations, they, 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 how these relations are and had been or would be, it's a different debate. Hmm. But Pakistan has been, has successfully engaged uh, most of the countries in the hmm. different perspectives. Hmm. So I would say engaging Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, US, EU in, the, in one, uh, this framework, is that is what I think he is referring to, hmm. and it is it is it is because a great Shamu idea. Because Shamu Qureshi did refer to it his will take time. With the different countries, yeah, it, including it, US, yeah. including Europe. It, it will take time, uh, Omar, because hmm. uh, if if we have to say, as he was saying, that is right, that whatever jargons had been were defeated because of the dynamics, evolving hmm. dynamics. Sudden hmm. conflict erupted in uh, you know Afghanistan, and then hmm. continued for twenty years. Hmm. Everything goes these kind of uh, thinking mm. in events and it does suspend, suspended. Mm. So now I would say that from now on, it appears to me that there will be, we will be able to maximize our diplomatic space All right. in terms of counter India mm. and also in terms of projecting Pakistan's neutrality towards international conflicts. And I think that is something that our Prime Minister has been talking time and again that Pakistan wants to have equal relationship and not be in any camp whatsoever. And that is also what was highlighted by Shah Mahmood Qureshi Saab. Maximizing diplomatic space. Quick answer, Farooq, is short of time. Right. Uh, what is the purpose of any foreign policy? Mm. It is to ensure that you have as many friends as possible. Mm. If there's an enemy, you make them neutral. Mm. If there's neutral element somewhere, you try to bring them into your friendship. And if they're friends, never let go, mm. right? So Pakistan has been working on that. The only nut that doesn't crack, mm. because it is headed by nuts, <laughs> is India. True. Uh, the rest are actually coming together, mm. and we are winning as many friends as possible. Inshallah, and we'll continue to win friends, and we'll continue to uh, legitimize Pakistan's position across the world, as sure. the current government has been doing. And the whole world is realizing and will continue to realize that Pakistan is a very important uh, player when it comes to geoeconomics or geostrategic uh, strategy of this region or of the world. Thank you very much, Ranathar Javed Saab. Thank you very much, Farakh Pitafi. It's a pleasure. We'll talk off the screen as well after yeah. the show. And ladies and gentlemen, 
A very successful a hallmark visit of our Prime Minister to Russia. A lot of important details were discussed, a lot of important points of views uh, were uh, converged during the conversations and uh, this uh, conversation has not ended. It will continue with further deliberations between the two countries also involving other important players in the region. With that, we come to, end of, uh, to the end of this uh, transmission. Uh, we bid you farewell and we hope that Pakistan comes stronger in the days to come. Allah Hafiz, Pakistan Zindabad.